threw only five interceptions last year, but Florida secondary got three of them in the opener. Salisbury will be dueling one of the best, Wayne Peace. Peace strung arm Miami last week and guided the Gators to a 17-9 win over SC a year ago. And now, coming up, round two, the Trojans host the Gators next on the USA's College Football 83. in Los Angeles, California. The USA Network presents College Football 83. Today, the Florida Gators meet the University of Southern California Trojans. USA's College Football 83 is brought to you by Mobile Detergent Gasoline. Mobile Detergent Gasoline for your everyday driving needs. By Toyota, to remind you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. And by Levi's Jeans, Cords, and Shirts. For quality and style, you can count on. It's a hot, humid afternoon here in Los Angeles as Florida and USC prepare to battle. 92 degrees here in Los Angeles at the present time, but right down here in the field, it's well over 100. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Walden along with Roy Firestone, and it's going to be tough for these two teams. It may not be as humid, Mike, as it was a year ago, but it's going to be plenty hot. In fact, they have the air conditioners out on the field for both teams. Uh, Florida, with one game under its belt, might be a little bit better conditioned than USC with their opening game here, but it should be a good one, USC looking for revenge from a year ago. And for USC, ushering in a new era, Ted Tolner, 43 years old. Head coach at USC, replacing John Robinson, who's now the head man with the Los Angeles Rams. Right, it's kind of an ominous statistic, though, but uh, it looks like Ted is entering a kind of a situation where the last three head coaches all lost their opening games for USC. Uh, Ted wants to break that string if he can. And for Sean Salisbury, the USC quarterback, back in action in 1983, after going out with a bad knee in the seventh game of 82 and knee surgery after that. One year's difference, though, could be a big difference for him. Uh, the experience, and obviously he played well against Florida in his opening game last year. So Sean will be a, a guy to watch, no doubt about it. Sean Salisbury and all of the Trojans remember well number 88 of the Florida uh -huh. Gators, Wilbur Marshall. Marshall sacked Salisbury four times. Yeah, 14 tackles overall in that game, Mike. Uh, he can play inside, outside, all over the field, and he'll be all over the field giving that young offensive line for USC a lot, a lot of trouble. The Florida quarterback is Wayne Peace. 71% completion percentage a year ago, best in the NCAA. That's right. In fact, he completed his first 12 passes last week against Miami. He's perhaps the best quarterback in the country in kind of a mediocre year overall for quarterbacks in the country, but Wayne's a fine quarterback. Okay, we're all set to go in this intersectional Florida versus USC. We'll be back with the kickoff after these messages. Florida has won the toss and the Gators will receive, which means that Steve Jordan, a junior from Reardon High School in San Francisco, will kick off to get this intersectional game underway. And there is Jordan, number five, who has a chance to become the all-time field goal kicker in USC history, breaking a record set a number of years ago by his brother Frank. Deep for Florida will be Eric Anderson, number five, and Lorenzo Hampton, number seven, and we're underway here on the sunshiny day at the Coliseum. Hampton will make no attempt to run it out. Touchback, and Florida will have a first and 10 from their 20. Wayne Peace will be at quarterback, a 71% completion average a year ago. Neil Anderson, the tailback. Joe Henderson, the fullback. Gary Roll, Tom Petty, Dwayne Dixon, the receivers for the Gators of Coach Charlie Pell. And up front, an experienced offensive line. Perhaps the best one is Lomas Brown. 275-pound tackle. 
along with John Hunt, Bromley, and the others. Here's the first play from scrimmage. Florida first and 10 from the Gator 20. Peace has Henderson and Anderson in his backfield. It'll be the fullback. Henderson gets about three. Matt Court made the tackle for the Trojans. USC defensively will have uh, the three down linemen, Dwayne Bickett, Brian Luft, and Matt Court. And the linebackers, Jack Del Rio, Keith Browner, Keith Biggers, and Jeff Brown. Look out for that young man, Biggers. He's going to be a key man. And there is the secondary for the Trojans. And by the way, happy birthday to cornerback Mac Johnson, 21 years old today. Second and seven at the Gator 23. Henderson gets the call again around the right side. Biggers is over there, helping out on the tackle. Gain on the play of up to about the 28, a pickup of five. Jack Del Rio and Keith Biggers brought him down. You know, we talked uh, earlier, Mike, about the inexperience of SC's offensive line. Well, the defensive line is also inexperienced, particularly on the line. A lot of players shifting from a linebacker position to the front line as we take a look at the officials in today's game. It's a split crew, by the way, three from the Southeast Conference and four from the Pac-10. It will be interesting to see how well the defensive line, especially with uh, Brian Luff moving into a new position, uh, into a new position, uh, adjusts to, to Wayne Peace, who can adjust uh, to their movement. Uh, he's, a, he's a rollout. He can scramble, and he can also set up, so he's a fine quarterback. Apparently, we are having a timing problem right off the bat. The weather is so hot here in Los Angeles, it may have caused the clock to malfunction. Anyway, the timer, the man in the white hat, and the referee in the white hat are conferring the referee Jimmy Harper from Atlanta, Georgia. Whatever the problem, it's been cleared up, and it's now third down and two at the Florida 28. Florida won last year in Gainesville, 17 to 9. Gators had a 14 to nothing lead. Trojans came back, really made a, a game of it there in the fourth quarter, but Florida won it 17 to 9. And at that time, Charlie Pell took a victory lap before 73,000 <laughs> plus in Gainesville and got about three quarters of the way around the track down there in Gainesville and couldn't make it any further. His tie askew and his shirt tail out, but what a big day for Florida football. It really was, I think, the kind of victory that put Florida football on the map, at least early last year. They considered it one of the biggest victories in the history of the program. We'll talk more about it in just a few moments. The two backs for Wayne Peace, number seven, Lorenzo Hampton, and the fullback, 39, Joe Henderson. Gators need two for a first down. Little quick throw, and they've got the first down. A little quick pitch from the quarterback, Wayne Peace, and he was able to complete it and pick up the first down at the 34-yard line. It went to Gary Roll, a, a wide receiver. You know, you're going to see Florida do a lot of that, dumping off to the fullback or the halfback. Very few passes to their inexperienced wide receivers. For the most part, they, they prefer the Bill Walsh type of offense, which is basically throw the ball short and don't put it up for grabs. First down, Florida at the Gator 34 in the first minute of action. This is Hampton trying to sweep wide. And Hampton is mowed down by Keith Browner, among others. Keith Browner, number 57, also in the picture. Daryl Hopper, a cornerback. Lorenzo Hampton, last year's starting fullback. Uh, Hampton and Neil Anderson about dead even in the contest for starting tailback. But because, of course, John L. Williams out with an injury, both of them are playing today. Hampton caught 11 passes last year while rushing for about 664 yards. And that's better than any rusher uh, on SC's team. So he's a pretty versatile back. Petty, the tight end, is in on the right side, and Dixon is flanked out to the left on second and seven at the Florida 37. Here comes Joe Henderson. He goes up to the 41, put down by cornerback Matt Johnson. A gain of four by the Florida fullback, Joe Henderson. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised before this day is over that Florida will unveil John L. Williams. Oh, yeah. He did not play in Florida's 28-3 victory over Miami last Saturday night in Gainesville. He was out with a stress foot fracture. But he is in uniform, may play. And he seemed like he was running pretty well in, in warm-ups, so we, I'm pretty sure we'll see him. We have a nickel back defense now for the Trojans. Third and three for Florida. Little quick in pass, and he has hit his man again, Wayne Peace. Throwing it complete at the 50-yard line and making the grab there for Florida was B. Lang. Well, here it is again. You get a chance to see B. Lang. He's only 5'8", 160 pounds. He's a bit of a midget. Didn't play much last year. He started all 11 games in 1981. The size is against him, as we see. And his brother, Walter, is a defensive back at UCLA, number two, B. Lang. He's almost literally a B at that size. 
So Florida on this initial drive has gained 30 yards to the midfield stripe. First and 10. There is B. Lang. He's off to a good start here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Lang coming in motion this way. It's the second man through, the tailback Neil Anderson, and the sophomore from Graceville, Florida, picks up about three more. Linebacker Jeff Brown made the hit. You're going to hear a lot about Neil Anderson in this game, Mike. Uh, he's one of the fastest men on the team. Uh, even if John L. Williams hadn't been hurt and Hampton moved into the fullback slot, Anderson probably would have started. He came on late last year, rushing for more than 100 yards in three games. Uh, runs a 4-5-40. Very quick. If he gets into the secondary, it could be all over. Ricky Natell and B. Lang wide to the left now on second and seven at the Southern California 47. Across the middle, oh, and the man was wide open, and that happened to be Tom Petty, the tight end. The pass was thrown perfectly. Petty simply dropped it. Well, tight end is obviously the position that I, I believe that Florida is the weakest in. Uh, Petty, not real experienced, uh, played JB ball last, uh, JB ball got in. Uh, 47 plays last year for the varsity, but not as good, of course, as their tight ends last year, Malarkey and Chris Faulkner, which were both really pro prospects, both uh, drafted fairly high. Now third and seven at the Trojan 47. No score. We have played uh, about two minutes of the first period, although the scoreboard clock is not operating. Sets up a screen, and it is dropped. John L. Williams dropped that ball. The screen was set up perfectly. Let me tell you what I think the key was there. The key, I think, was the size of SC's defensive line. They're very, very tall. 6'6 six, six for Luft, 6'6 uh, six, six for Court. As you take a look at it again, Peace had to sort of leave his feet. As you saw, that great size really kind of obscured his vision. Was not a good pass uh, to his receiver there, his primary re receiver, uh, Williams. And Williams couldn't hold on to the ball either. But I think it really was the size of the SC's line that hurt more than anything. Dave Nardone ready to punt for Florida. The deep man for the Trojans is Daryl Hopper. A lot of hang time on this. Fair catch is signal for there at the 17. A 31-yard punt. And so early in the first period, SC will take over. No score between USC and Florida. Ray Spencer and the Kamana. Hank Norman, Cornwell, and Timmy Ware are the receivers. Fitzpatrick, Regal, Slayton, Halleck, and Rutgers up front. An inexperienced USC offensive line. Again, it's, this time it's going to be Spencer, and he's put down at the 19 by Randy Clark, a strong safety, and that's going to be a loss of a yard. On defense for the Gators, Roy Harris, Tim Newton, key man, the nose guard for the Gators. Wilbur Marshall, Alonzo Johnson, Mark Korf, who, by the way, is from this area, and Fred McAllister. The secondary, Isom, Vaughn, Clark, and Lilly. No score, and the clock, the scoreboard clock at the peristyle end of the Los Angeles Coliseum has not been operating since the first minute of action. So I would guess we've played about three, four minutes so far of this quarter. Third down and eight for the Trojans. In motion comes Mark Boyer. The throw is to Cornwell, the tight end. He's up to the 26, thrown back to the 24. They will mark his forward progress at the 26, but it's going to be two yards shy of a first down, so the Trojans will have to punt. And the hit on Cornwell made by Mark Corp. I thought he had caught the ball, but apparently he had the ball and then lost it. He heard, as they say, the footsteps, I think. Fred's never been known as a great receiver. He's a tremendous blocker, but uh, they rarely throw to the tight ends, as we talked about all last year. This year, I think they're going to throw more to the tight ends and to the primary receivers. We see Troy Richardson, the new punter for SC this year. He's a junior college transfer. And he's replacing David Pryor, who was the punter for some four years at USC. The transfer from Golden West gets it out of there. Hey, it's a nice kick by Troy Richardson. And he gets a good roll. And the ball will be down at the 24-yard line with the roll, a punt by Troy Richardson of some 56 yards. So what a debut for Troy Richardson. And what other team should he play for but the men of Troy, the USC Trojans? Well, we go from Troy West to Troy Richardson. Absolutely. Every year we got to have a Troy on this team, right? No score in the first quarter from Los Angeles. Wayne Peace, a senior from Lakeland, who ranks second in Florida history in career passing, nearly 5,300 yards at the controls. First and 10 from the Florida 24. Play action pass, and it's dropped again by Williams. Almost intercepted. Did Browner get it? He might have trapped it. We'll wait and see. Keith Browner trapped it. 
almost came up with an interception. Here it is again. You get a chance to see it. Walter Odom, the tight end here, bobbles the football. Uh, it really should have been caught. There's no question about it. This kid is 6'5", 215. He's got great hands, usually, and good speed. Uh, I tell you something, Charlie Pell really likes Walter Odom. He's a, he's a youngster, uh, he's a freshman, and, and we're going to see more of him today. Dwayne Dixon wide to the right side. He's the key receiver for the Gators. 45 grabs a year ago. Second and 10. Through the middle is Neil Anderson, the tailback. Jack Del Rio puts him down close to the 30-yard line. They will spot the ball at the 29, so credit Anderson with a gain of five. You know, we've been downplaying, I think, the experience or inexperience of both lines. There's some tremendously experienced football players on USC, including on defense, including Jack Del Rio uh, and Keith Brown, are both All-American candidates, too. On third and five, the Trojans will use the nickel defense. Five defensive backs as Tommy Haynes comes in and Dwayne Bickett, a lineman, goes out. Peace pumps once. Now he throws. The grab is made, but I believe it was caught out of bounds. Yes, it was caught by Dwayne Dixon but Dwayne Dixon was well covered by Tony Brewer but apparently he made his grab before he stepped out of bounds because they're going to mark it down up to 36 again pretty good pressure on peace forcing him out of the pocket on the run and uh, let's take a look and see how close he came to being out of bounds Dixon it looks like made the, the catch Brewer right on top of him though good coverage on the part of the SC secondary Florida with a first down at the 36 the Florida 36. Peace throws this one out here, and a catch is made by Odom. He goes to the 42 of Southern California. A 22-yard pass from Peace to Odom. Now, there's a good example of why Odom's size was such a big difference there. As we see, he's a freshman from Miami, Florida, 6 feet 5 inches, and that 6 feet 5 really came in handy. He's putting a lot of pressure on Peace, hitting him a little late there. And then a good catch on the part of Odom over Keith Browner coming up with some extra yardage, breaking a tackle there by Daryl Hopper, coming up with a big, big gain. All right, it's first and 10 now for Florida at the Southern California 42. It's Hampton to the 35, twists down to the 30. And Hampton pulled down by the safety, Jerome Tyler. And the Gators pick up 12 more yards with Hampton doing the honors this time. Well, the kind of delay call right there, a big, big block there by uh, Bromley, the center looked like, and Lorenzo Hampton from Lake Wales coming up with another big gain, another first down, and Florida's moving the football. First and 10 now for the Florida Gators at the Southern California 30. We're midway through the first period, no score. Mike Walden and Roy Firestone from the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the home of the 1984 Olympics. Bentley marker is dropped. This time it's Hampton trying the middle, wrapped up by Matt Court. They will, uh, they will put his, uh, spot the ball down there at about the 26. And the penalty will be against Florida. It appears right now, Mike, as though Florida is running right towards their nose guard, Brian Luff, trying to run, run right over him. Of course, last year with the Chica and All-America, they probably couldn't have gotten away with it. But Luff is pretty inexperienced at that position. He is a junior. He's a big kid, but he's not quite as strong going over the center as Georgia Chica was. So it looks as though Florida is trying to do that, trying to run right over, over center. The new head coach of the Trojans, Ted Tolner, 43 years old. After... One year under John Robinson as the Trojans offensive coordinator. Nine years as an assistant coach at San Diego State and Brigham Young University where they really love to throw the football. The penalty carries the ball back to the 40 yard line now. It'll be first and 20. Henderson comes up with it. The Trojans have the ball. Joe Henderson, the fullback, fumbles. And let's see who gets up off the bottom of the pile. It looks like Keith Browner. Big crack. It in. is. Keith Browner makes the recovery. Take a look at the big hat. This is a big crack on Joe Henderson in the back here. He's got some pretty good running room. Let's see if we can find out who made the hit. It's hard to tell right there. But there's the fumble. Henderson was really nailed. He got up very slowly. And uh, as he's got the football, first down. It appeared that it was a linebacker that made the tackle, but you really couldn't distinguish the number. Trojans now with a first down. The ball is at the SC 41. John Salisbury with his first pass of 1983. 
and it's complete to Timmy Ware at the 45 of Florida. A 14-yard gain, first down for the Trojans. It's going to be very interesting to see how well the SC receivers do today. Talk about inexperience. They don't have a real burner in there. Timmy Ware is the fastest man on SC's team. He's on the track team. Caught a couple of big passes against Oklahoma last year, but played very little. Coming up just a straight one-on-one -on -one coverage there, getting a first down. There's Timmy Ware going in up in, uh, as kind of a decoy as John Kamana gets the call into the middle. And the fullback from Honolulu picks up a couple. Tackle made by Fred McAllister, Tim Newton, and Greg Cleveland. Talking about Kamana, he probably will be the only back in there when Essie goes to two tight ends and one back set. Uh, and it's imperative that that one back can catch the football. Kamana with good hands, a tremendous blocker. You'll see him a lot as the lone setback today. Hank Norman is wide to the left side. Timmy Ware wide to the right. And the lone running back right now is Kamana for USC. Right there. Second and eight at the 43 of Florida. Checkoff by Sean Salisbury. A long count. Little throw complete to Hank Norman at the 30. Hank Norman goes to the Florida 28. A pickup of 15 yards at another first down for Southern California. Well, Hank Norman is uh, another guy that Ted Tolner is very high on. Tolner, of course, the pass-oriented coach. An obviously an important position. It's been an area of concern for this team. Norman, a sophomore who caught all of four passes last year. He's big, good hands. Seems to come into his own uh, late in the, the practices, especially in the fall drills, but uh, he's ready to go now. Good catch there. Out of the eye formation. Tailback is Michael Harper. He gets the call at the 30. And he is stopped at the line of scrimmage and shoved all the way back to the 31. But the line of scrimmage, the 28, that's where they will mark his progress. Randy Clark, Bruce Vaughn, Tim Newton having a hand in getting him down. Charlie Pell in his fifth year as the head coach at Florida. And the Gators went 8-4 and four last year, played in a blue bonnet bowl, and what an exciting game that was. Arkansas beating Charlie Pell's team 28-24. Second down and 10 at the Florida 28. No score somewhere in the first quarter. <laughs> the scoreboard clock is not working. Timmy Ware coming in motion this way. Salisbury, a lot of time, dumps it off incomplete. He was throwing to Hank Norman the split in, but the pass was thrown a little bit behind Norman. Sean Salisbury put on a little weight since last season. He's up to 218 right now on that six foot five inch frame of his from Orange Glen High School in Escondido. And Sean Salisbury will be the first one to tell you that he is not the best athlete in the Salisbury family. His 14-year-old brother, Brett, is. So down the line, another four or five years, you'll be hearing from another Salisbury. Right now, it's third and 10. Trojans ball at the Florida 28. Lone running back, John Kamana. Ware is wide to the right. He's going to go to Norman. And he's pulled down at the 24-yard line. Hank Norman making the grab. Ware had gone deep. Norman had cut through the middle and slanted over toward the sidelines. And Tony Lilly put the hit on Hank Norman. You just take a look at this. A little curl pattern. Really very little way to cover it. It's just a, a turn in. And he comes up. Picked up a few yards. Lilly, a good short tackle there, though, just in case Norman broke that one. We will get a field goal attempt by Steve Jordan. They will spot this ball at the 31 yard line thus it would be a 41 yard field goal attempt by Jordan holding will be Timmy Green the backup quarterback the kick by Steve Jordan it looks good it is a 41 yard field goal by Steve Jordan so the Trojans get on the board first and lead now three nothing over Florida That 41-yard field goal by Steve Jordan means that USC has now scored in 178 straight games, the longest current streak in the nation. That's over a span of 16 years, 178 straight scoring. You know who had that last longest streak? It was Oklahoma, and the Trojans shut them out down in Norman a year ago. 12 nothing. Right? Stopped their streak at 181. Jordan with a strong leg today, kicked that ball beyond the end line. Mm -hmm. That's the best defense in the world, just kick it where they can return it. There is a bit of a breeze at his back, maybe 10, 12 miles an hour, but he's still got a good strong leg into that one. Now the Florida Gators down three to nothing will have a first and 10 from their 20. 
Wayne Peace will be at quarterback. The fullback, John L. Williams, who missed last week's game against Miami uh, because of a stress foot fracture. And the tailback, Neil Anderson. Dixon comes in motion this way. Dwayne Dixon. It'll be Anderson, Neil Anderson. Picks up about three. Brian left the nose guard, who was filling in for the graduated Georgia Chica, making the hit. Luft is 6'6 and 255 from Bullard High School in Fresno. He was a, an all-star goalie on his high school soccer team. And he put a pretty good stop on Anderson that time. Brian Luft coming out of a defensive tackle position. It's, it's a new position for him to be over the nose guard. Uh, he's a little tall, not quite meaty enough, but uh, there's a lot of talent there, and I'm sure he's going to improve as the season goes on. Dixon going in motion. Two receivers to the right side. Peace wants to go to one of them. Throws across the middle. Is it intercepted by almost by Jerome Tyler? Tyler had a better shot at that than Gary Roll, the intended receiver. And the key to this here, I believe, is, is putting pressure on Wayne Peace. They're forcing him out of the pocket, not giving him a lot of time to throw. Last year, he had all kinds of time to throw, and I, and I think that's the difference early in this football game anyway. And Peace doesn't like to throw a pass longer than 20 yards, no. or at least based on past performances. Some of his critics might say he can't throw a pass very much longer than 20 yards. That's been one of his big criticisms, that he can't throw the long ball. Williams leaves at fullback, replaced by Joe Henderson. Florida now confronted with a third and eight from their own 23, 3-0 SC. Peace with a lot of time. Runs up to the line, the 25, 30, and he is pulled down from behind by Keith Biggers at the 32. Looks like he's got the first down. It is. First down for Florida. You see Wayne Peace's protection he's wearing in the bottom part of his back from his back surgery. Right. Wayne Peace this year, I guess in some res respects, made medical history. Yes. He had an operation to repair an injured disc in his ba lower back that may be compared to arthroscopic surgery of the back. It, I guess it's the best way to compare it, although it's not literally that. And, and just three or four weeks after having back surgery, major back surgery, he was out throwing a football. It's an amazing story. Petty and Roller wide to the right side on first and 10 at the Florida 32. Here comes Henderson, and right after him is Dwayne Pickett. Penalty marker goes down. Keith Bronner made the hit. Dwayne Bickett putting pressure on the runner, Joe Henderson. We will watch referee Jimmy Harper holding against Florida. Well, that'll cross the Gators 10. There is a new rule in college football, actually a couple of them. One of them is that when you have the flip of the coin, when one team wins, they have the option. And I say they have the option of whether to either kick or receive to start the game, or else they can say, hey, I'm going to defer my options until the start of the second half. Take a look at Wayne Peace right there. When you talk about Wayne Peace, you are talking about stability. This is a guy who had the same girlfriend since the ninth grade. He's still going out with her. He's wait, wait a minute. That's Where true. did you get the that ninth information? grade. We check these things out, Michael. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, he is an all-American boy type. The guy next door. Ball is at the 24-yard line now. It's first and 20 for the Florida Gators. Trojans lead it. 3-0 on the field goal by Jordan. That pass could have been deflected by uh, Tommy Haynes. However, the grab was made by Gary Roll. And you'll notice that Haynes almost gets his right hand on the ball right here. Just does miss it. Now, Gary Roll is not exactly a giant either. He's just an inch taller than B. Lang. He's 5'9", 170, but he runs a 4'6", He's their speedy wideout, and that's not real fast either. They're not a very fast bunch in the receiving category, but you see Wayne Peace has completed 5 out of 9, so they're doing a pretty good job so far. Trojans try to give a different look on defense to Peace. Oh, there is Keith Biggers making the hit. Keith Biggers. A junior college transfer from Mount San Antonio, a first-team J.C. All-American, 6'2 and 220. Keith Biggers, what a hit he makes on John L. Williams. You know, he made uh, quite a few eyebrows raised in practice earlier this year. He literally broke down a wall in practice. He hit a wall in warm-ups and practice out of the uh, at Exposition Park Field, knocked a wall down, very enthusiastic. A real hitter, great athlete, Keith, Keith Biggers. You're going to hear a lot about him today. Looks like a rock concert at the beach someplace, doesn't <laughs> it? In the stands. On third and 16, Peace sets up the screen to Williams. And Williams is dragged down at the 29. 
The first man to get a hand on him was Jeff Brown, but it was Jack Del Rio who finished him off. So the Trojans hold, and Florida will be forced to punt. Again, the size of the, the three-man line really makes a big difference here. Tony Corrito putting his hands up. Uh, he's six, almost 6'6", six, six right there. Really makes it difficult for Wayne Pease to see his receiver, so he's got to wait that extra moment. Here's the punt. Ray Criswell, who averaged almost 43 yards a punt last season, delivers a beauty this time. Daryl Hopper all the way back at the 20. Hopper to the 30. Daryl Hopper runs into heavy traffic, and down he goes at the 34. A 50-yard punt and a 14-yard return by Daryl Hopper. The tackle made by Bill Nelson. We're somewhere in the first quarter, probably about two minutes to play. The scoreboard clock is not working. The Trojans leading 3-0 over Florida. First down and 10 now. The ball is at the 34-yard line of the Southern California Trojans. It's Kamana slanting over tackle. And the 21-year-old athlete from Honolulu picks up about four yards, tackled by the interior linebackers of the Gators, Fred McAllister and Mark Corp. Corp, by the way, is from Granada Hills. He went to Kennedy High School, same high school that produced Jeff Regal, a starting offensive lineman for the Trojans. We have not talked much about Wilbur Marshall so far in this game, and that's because uh, Essie's doing a pretty good job of diffusing him so far. That double tight end situation allows a tight end to be on Marshall, puts a little more pressure on him. Norman is wide to the right. Timmy Ware wide left. Out of the I formation this time. The tailback, Todd Spencer. 40, 44, and he smacked down hard there. And the hit is made by Fred McAllister, the senior linebacker from Melbourne, Florida. McAllister was a backup last year, started only one game. Seniors had co consistent injury problems since uh, hurting his knee as a freshman. Uh, but when he's healthy and ready to go, he's a prototype inside linebacker. Also, I want to make mention that Marshall was really nailed on a crack back block just now. And I'm telling you something, they're really concentrating on number 88. This is an official's timeout for a measurement. Todd Spencer, the tailback, needed six yards to pick up a first down. It's going to be so close, we're going to measure just a little bit shy. That much. Third down and inches now for the Trojans at the 44 of USC. This is a very even football game so far, Mike. A very defensive-oriented football game. Seems like both lines are firing out pretty well on defense. We haven't seen a real big game-breaking play so far, or even just a big offensive play yet. Hank Norman, the split in, off to the right side. Timmy Ware is flank left. Lone running back, John Kamana. Trojans probably will not have the services of Joe Cormier, a tight end and a key member of their offense. Quarterback sneak by Sean Salisbury, and he's got the first down for Southern California, up to the 45. You see, the Trojans are going to go with a lot of tight end play this year, using two tight ends, Cornwell and Cormier, or Boyer, another option that they have. And they also have a good young freshman by the name of Eric McKee. So they have depth at that tight end position, and I think that you're going to see Ted Tolner use two tight ends about 50% on offense. Trojans with a first down from their 45-yard line. SC on top, 3-0, thanks to a 41-yard field goal by Jordan, Steve Jordan. Todd Spencer, maybe a yard, no more. Roy Harris, the big guy, is right on top of him. He's a senior tackle from Winter Garden, 6'2 and 258. The linebacker, Mark Cork, also had a piece of the action. But you're right, we haven't heard much so far from the nose guard, Tim Newton, or from Wilbur Marshall. That's the end of the first period here at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. USC 3, Florida nothing. A double. Wide receivers for the Trojans to start this second quarter. Hank Norman to the right, Timmy Ware to the left. Ball is on the 46-yard line of USC. It's second and nine. Shalsbury across the middle. Nice grab by Norman. Or no, it's not Norman. It's Cornwell. Fred Cornwell, the tight end, making the grab. And Mark Korf right on top of him to put him down at the 50-yard line. A pickup of six. 
There he is once again working on uh, the quick release this time of Salisbury. Not spent, spending a lot of time back there. Wilbur Marshall also assisted on a tackle. Cornwell's second catch of the game. Second time they've thrown to him anyway. And that's kind of rare. It'd be rare when you see one pass thrown to Cornwell a whole game. Of course, every Trojan fan will remember that grab he made in the last three seconds against Oklahoma here a couple of years ago from John Major. Major now the starting quarterback at Texas A&M. Todd Spencer into Florida territory and scrambles down to the Florida 41. First down for the Trojans. Nice run by Spencer after taking that little swing pass from Sean Salisbury. Here's a pretty good block uh, at the top of your screen, as you saw, that gave uh, Salisbury a little extra time by John Kamina. And uh, Todd Spencer had nearly 600 yards rushing last year, but things you have to remember, the fact that uh, he could catch the football as well. First and 10 at the 41 of Florida. Trojans on the move again, this time shifting into the eye. You can hear Salisbury barking out those signals. Spencer swings to the right side. Makes his cut at the fumbles, the ball, and it goes out of bounds. A break for the Trojans. The ball flipped out of bounds before Tony Lilly or Eason could get over there and make the recovery for Florida. All right, here it is again. A pretty good effort, too, on the part of Spencer. Looks like uh, he was trapped back there almost at the line of scrimmage. You just see a good ground-level shot of this. There's Tony Lilly grabbing him from the back, and he's put down. The ball pops loose at the last minute. It looks like a, a man in the secondary tried to pick up the ball, but it was already out of bounds. A big break for, for, the, for SC. And a gain of two yards for Todd Spencer. Second and eight now at the 39 of the Gators. Kennedy Pola is the new fullback for Southern California. In fact, he's the lone running back. Pola gets the call right away. Gets maybe one yard. Kennedy Pola started last season as a linebacker. And after four games due to all of the injuries, John Robinson had to make a change, and he made Pola into a fullback. Now, we're getting close to the Florida 30-yard line. Every time last year, Florida got inside the, uh, the SC got inside the Florida 30. The Gators blitzed on every single down. So when they get to the 30, let's watch for that next. Ted Tolder with a headset right alongside of Ted is Darren Moon. And the other assistant coach to Ted's left is Donnie Ray. Third down and seven at the 38. Three wide receivers. Now going in motion is Mark Boyer. Across the middle, the grab is made by Cornwell. Fred Cornwell, the senior, carries to the 22 of Florida. A gain of 15, a first down for the Trojans. And the tackle on Cornwell made by the left quarterback, Ricky Eason. And this is a good example of them reading the blitz. Salisbury did a real good job of reading the blitz. They had the blitz going on at that play. There's Bruce Vaughn making the tackle, or at least the initial tackle on Cornwell, who has his second catch of the game. That's the score, thanks to a 41-yard field goal by Steve Jordan. That's the difference. We're early in the second quarter, about 12 and a half minutes to play. Todd Spencer to the 20. Out of bounds around the 16. Eason and McAllister chasing him out of bounds. Gain of six, second and four for the Trojans. SC took over this ball back at their own 34. Now they've driven it down to the Florida 16 on this warm day. The thermometer at the peristyle end of the Los Angeles Coliseum registering 95 degrees. So if you know if it's 95 on the thermometer, it's got to be 105 down on that field. And you know long drives can really wear down a defense, and I think that's what Desi's trying to do, just hold on to the football, try to wear down that defense. Second and four at the 16. Kamenov back and forth. Salisbury doing a nice job. Throwing. Touchdown, USC! The grab made by Fred Hornwell, the senior from Saugus. 16 yards, Sean Salisbury to Fred Cornwell. And a scene reminiscent of the Trojans' victory over Oklahoma a couple of years ago, except that it was at the other end of the field. And here's a down-level view of it. Good pass, too, in traffic. It beats Tony Lilly. It looked like Lilly fell down, maybe, momentarily. Cornwell coming up with a pretty good day so far. That's a 66-yard drive at 11 plays. Jordan will be in to try to kick the extra point out of the hold of Tim Green. Joe Leinbach to make the snap. It was partially deflected. Penalty markers go down, and it was off to the right. 
We will see about the penalty. Looked like somebody was able to break through and deflect that extra point attempt. It's offside against Florida. No wonder they broke through. That may have been the difference right there. It's very rare when you see Jordan miss an extra point. He only missed one all last year. I think his career was, how many is that for, for uh, conversions on extra Well, I'm points? glad you asked that, Roy. I'm glad Blackstone. I asked it, too. His career PAT record, 67 out of 68. Yes, I knew it was just missing one, and so he's going to get another shot at it right now. He's a fine kicker. And you know, you look at Steve Jordan down there, and you think, well, here is a kid that's a sophomore in high school. Talk about your baby-faced athletes. I know. He is young, young. Green will hold. Leimbach will make the snap. And this time, it's drilled right through. And Tim Green puts his hands in the air along with referee Jimmy Harper. And the Trojans now break out to a 10-0 lead over Florida with a little over 12 minutes remaining in the second quarter. On this hot September afternoon, the Trojans take a 10-0 lead over Florida. Steve John Steve Jordan rather is ready to kick off to Lorenzo Hampton. Hampton three yards deep, touchback. And the play was capped on that 16-yard pass. Salisbury to Cornwell, and what a great job of faking by Salisbury to Todd Spencer. Oh, yeah. And Cornwell had an easy shot in the end zone for that 16-yard aerial. Wayne Peace at quarterback now for the Gators on first and 10 from the 20. Peace has hit on 6 out of 10, 55 yards. But now he's got to play catch-up, down 10-0. Henderson is the fullback. Hampton is the tailback, and it's Hampton through the middle for about three. Matt Court has it in his grasp. Matt Court, sophomore from Goleta. You talk about the three down linemen for the Trojans. Dwayne Bickett is 6'5 and 228. Brian Luff, the nose guard, at 6'6 and 255. And Court, a defensive end, 6'6 and 240. So not only do they have some heft, I mean, they've got height, too, to go with it. Yeah, they're Redwoods, no doubt about that. Second down and seven at the 23 of Florida. B. Lang wide to the right side. Henderson trying to get a round tackle. Gets to the 26, pulled down by the birthday boy, Matt Johnson, celebrating number 21 today. Johnson from Chula Vista. And Johnson is known really more than anything else as the containment quarterback. Uh, it's been very specialized what's going on now in the secondary. But uh, uh, Johnson was a safety. He's another one of the Trojan sophomore defensive, defensive people in the back there. A lot of very young players back there. Johnson remembers Florida at Gainesville a year ago. He was the starter, got burned, lost the starting job, making amends here today. Third down and four. The ball is at the 26 of Florida. Trojans 10, the Gators nothing. Peace across the middle, and the receiver was knocked down, or either that or he slipped. It right. was Hampton coming out of the Hampton. backfield. Yeah, it looked like, uh, as we take a look at it again, it just like he just, his feet came out right from under him. And there's uh, Charlie Pell trying to urge his troops on. They sure. just can't seem to get on track offensively. It doesn't look like last year, they got rolling real early in the game, and they had that big pass to Spencer Jackson, got him going early. The big, diff big difference this year is just they just haven't had the big run to set them up, it doesn't look like. Ray Criswell will punt Florida out of trouble. Delivers a beautiful spiral. Hopper at the 25. Daryl Hopper stopped it at the 35. Wait, did he lateral the ball or what? All of a sudden, it looked like a rugby scrimmage. A 49-yard punt by Criswell and a 10-yard return by Daryl Hopper. USC 10, Florida nothing. SC's going to have the ball again. They're going to try to hold on to it as long as they can, try to run up about a six, seven-minute drive, see what else they can do. But I think the key to this football game so far has been the play of their offensive line and the passing of Salisbury. SC's doing a real good job up front firing out. Low running back for the Trojans is Kennedy Pola, the fullback. Penalty marker goes down as Pola takes the pitch and just goes a couple. Looks like Ken Rutgers yeah. made a move. Yeah. 
and that's that's to be expected really when you when you take a look at the fact even though Rutgers is the most experienced aside from Tony Slayton player out there on the line uh, you'd, you'd expect guys to be moving offsides and especially in the first game haven't seen too much of it today this year when you go down into your three-point stance if you make any movement at all like just turn your head give some sort of a fake you get nailed for the penalty and I know the Trojans and undoubtedly the Florida teams have been working on that a great deal all right it's first and 15 now the ball is at the 27 of Southern California Trojans 10 nothing over Florida here comes Kennedy Pola penalty marker goes down again as Pola side of course from Wilbur uh we talked briefly before about Alonzo Johnson. Uh, he's probably the second most talented player on the team, aside, of course, from Wilbur, uh, Wilbur Marshall. Uh, Alonzo Johnson missed last year because of disciplinary reasons. They don't go into it too much detail. The Florida folks don't. But he played extensively as a freshman. Alonzo Johnson, 6'3", 225, runs a 4'740". He is very fast. They're not going to run too much at Alonzo's side today. Holding against Southern California. So the ball goes back now to the 19 of the Trojans, and it'll be first down 23 for SC. Kennedy Pola and Michael Harper out of the I formation. Harper at the tailback. It's Harper. Harper spinning around, and pretty good run by Michael Harper up to the 29. Picked up 10. Hit made by the free safety, Tony Lilly. Big rap against Michael Harper, of course, last year, and it was pretty evident late in the season, is that he's not real durable. When he gets hit, he gets hurt a lot. Uh, he's one of the fastest players on this football team. Good run right here, bouncing off a couple of tackers. The tackler's uh, not durable enough, though. I think he's working on that, trying to get a little stronger and trying to take a, take a lick now and then. One thing, though, Michael Harper always seems to excel against Notre Dame. He did uh, last even, season. Even without the football, too. <laughs> yes, that's right. And any Notre Dame fan will remind you of that. But he also played well when Marcus Allen was out a couple of years back. It's Michael Harper again, weaving his way through heavy traffic. And Harper up to the 36. Gain of seven more. So Harper now in two carries has gained 17 yards. And he's a, a pretty good gator killer last year against Florida, even though in a losing effort. Harper, then the number one tailback, carried the ball 16 times for 69 yards. That was by far the best day of any setback for us. And when he got hurt in that Florida game, Roy Firestone, he missed the next six. We have not seen Freddie Crutcher at tailback yet for SC. He's coming off of knee surgery, and they say that Crutcher is just as good as a year ago. Third down and six at the 36. Salisbury, who almost intercepted. Corp was putting the pressure on there, and so was Alonzo Johnson. Corp almost had the interception. He was throwing to Zephrani Lee out of the SC backfield. But you got to give it to the uh, SC offensive line. They had plenty of time that that particular uh, instance for Sean to throw. Sean waited and uh, just threw a bad pass. Lorenzo Hampton is dropping back deep to accept the punt from Troy Richardson. First time he was called upon in an SC uniform, Richardson delivered one of some 56 yards. Making the snap, Joe Leinbach. Trojans 10, Florida nothing. 9-14 to go in the second quarter. That one goes kind of straight up the chute. Fair catch signal for by Lenny. Drops the ball, the Trojans have it! Lilly signaled for the catch, couldn't hold on, and coming up with it is the man who made the stop, Joe Leinbach. Joe Leinbach. Boy, that's a dream for a guy who only gets in and makes snaps and to recover a fumble. Well, this is the value of special teams right here. Lilly usually very sure-handed, rarely drops the football. One of the most versatile athletes on Florida's team, and Leinbach, as, as Mike mentioned, who uh, comes in and snaps the kicks and punts uh, that time, coming up with a dream come true against Florida. It appeared that Lilly took his eye off the ball at the last split second and maybe was looking eyeball to eyeball with Leinbach. Whatever, Lilly dropped it. Leinbach made the recovery. And the Trojans with a golden opportunity, first and 10 from their 29. Good faking by Salisbury. He throws to Norman. Great grab by Hank Norman at the 16 of Florida. Terrific catch. Hank Norman, a sophomore from Holly High School in Long Beach. 13 yards. Great catch by Norman. And the Trojans now with a first down at the Florida 16. This time, once again, Salisbury throwing with lots of protection. Norman upended right here by the defender. 
still held out of the football, and the size makes a difference right there, Hank, there at six foot three inches. An excellent first half for Sean Salisbury. Eight out of 11, 93 yards, and one touchdown. Boyer in motion. The give is to Kennedy Pola. Not much there for the sophomore from Santa Ana. Pola goes to the 15. You were talking before about Norman. Norman's really close to the six foot four inches. Between the tight ends, Cornwell is 6'5", Boyer is 6'4", uh, Norman 6'4", you got some very tall receivers, as opposed to Florida's receivers who are tiny. And that seems to be making a difference, the size of the receivers today. What is it about Polly High and Long Beach? They always produce outstanding receivers. G, uh, G. Washington was one, Tony Hill another, and now Hank Norman. Second and eight, the ball is at the 15 of Florida. Trojans already on top, 10 to nothing, threatening to get some more. Salisbury, lot of time, look at that time. Now he decides he's gonna have to eat the ball because everyone covered. That might be the difference between the Sean Salisbury in the first game of last season and the Sean Salisbury in the first game of 1983. Except I think this time maybe he waited too long for a pass to throw. He should, maybe should have taken off downfield. He had plenty of time and plenty of room to run. Uh, Kamada coming up with the last block. Uh, he, he might have uh, scampered another 10 yards if he headed up field a little early. It's third down and 13 now. Ball is back close to the 20. In motion comes Timmy Ware. Salisbury looking downfield for Ware. And Salisbury will be pulled down at the 25-yard line. That's Vaughn. Is that Vaughn? The tackle was made by Doug Drew. Yeah. Here's a ground level shot of it again. Sean moving out of the, the pocket, rolling it out. You wanted to throw the football even at the last minute, but then decided to hold on to it. And Drew coming up with a nice play from around the other end of the field. Now the ball is at the 25 of Florida. The Trojans did have it down to their 15. And a field goal attempt from the 32, a 42 yard field goal attempt by Steve Jordan out of the hold of Timmy Jordan, or rather out of Timmy Green. And this one is no good. This was wide to the right by Steve Jordan. The score remains Southern California 10, Florida nothing with 6.40 to play in the second quarter. Walden and Roy Firestone from the Los Angeles Coliseum where the temperature has gone up three degrees. It's now up to 98 here in Los Angeles. Trojans on top 10 to nothing. Florida with a first down. And the pitch going to Neil Anderson. Anderson flipped down close to the 30 by Tommy Haynes. Haynes, a safety from West Covina. If you take a look at the replay right here, you see Florida trying to open it up a little bit, trying to get outside, which is not an easy thing to do. Just see Brian Love giving chase right there. And there's a good tackle there by Haynes. It's not easy to get outside against SC because of the speed of their linebackers and the speed of particularly of Keith Browner and Jack Del Rio but they're trying to open it up a little bit. They have to. Dwayne Dixon wide to the right side. Peace hasn't uh, gone in his direction much. Pitch to Neil Anderson trying to find some running room and it's good for about four yards to the 34. Neil Anderson, a sophomore from Graceville, Florida. Brought down by Matt Court and Jeff Brown. By the way, Jeff Brown and Keith Biggers are the inside linebackers for the Trojans today, replacing John Berry and Neil Hope. They were the starters as of a couple of weeks ago, but Neil Hope has had a hamstring, and Barry has a neck problem. So Keith Biggers and Jeff Brown in the inside for the linebacking core of SC today. Not quite a first down for the Florida Gators. Maybe it'll be a quarterback sneak by Wayne Peace. Nope. He's gonna go, and yeah, he crosses him up to John L. Williams. That guy can fly out of bounds at the 40-yard line of USC. 25 yards on the pass play. Peace to John L. Williams. The free safety, Jerome Tyler, out of bounds on Williams at the 40. Okay, here's the replay. Play action pass. He starts to roll outside, throws on the run to John L. Williams, who was not playing at 100% today, still nursing that uh, stretch, stress fracture to the foot. Good block there, by the way, on the part of, on, on Daryl Hopper, sprung uh, Williams for another five or six yards. But Williams, perhaps the most talented back Florida has this year. Uh, if he can stay away from injuries, he should be a very good one this year. Gary Roll, the wide receiver to the right side. Dixon to the left side. Lorenzo Hamp and Hampton over left tackle. Pulled down by Jeff Brown. 
Hampton down to the 34. Pickup of six by Lorenzo Hampton from Lake Wales, Florida. 210 pound junior. Second down and four. First downs are even, but the score in favor of USC 10 to nothing on a 16 yard pass from Sean Salisbury to tight end Fred Cornwell and a 41 yard field goal from Steve Jordan. And this is Florida's best drive of the game. Peace going out of the eye. Hampton. Hampton running over people. Giving him a ride for an extra yard or two. Very close to that first down. Very close to the 30 yard line. Keith Biggers is in there along with Jack Del Rio. First down for Florida at the Trojan 30 yard line. We are talking before about Keith Biggers, the, the inside linebacker. Uh, the inside linebacker position overall for SC has uh, been hit with some nagging injuries. Depth problem uh, arising later uh, in the practices this year. Biggers a starter, even though it's just transferring from Mount San Antonio College. As we mentioned before, uh, Biggers a versatile athlete. We'll talk more about it after this play. B. Wayne is wide to the left side. And John uh, Joe Henderson is pulled on by Keith Browner. Joe Henderson, the fullback. Take a look at this again. You take a look at uh, Henderson moving outside here. Good run outside. Some pretty good up front blocking, too. And a pretty good one-on-one -on -one tackle on the part of Keith Brown at number 57. Second down and two now at the 22 of USC. Split backs now for Peace. It's John L. Williams. Not much there. Dwayne Bickett closed the gap in a hurry. It's 42-year-old Charlie Pell from the Florida sidelines surveying the situation, which finds his club with three minutes and 20 seconds left in the second quarter. Down there at the door, knocking at the Southern California 20-yard line. A lot of questions about the Florida team this year. Are they under investigation by the NCAA for violations? Well, we won't really know till December when the findings come out, but uh, reportedly a lot of the investigations have to do with the fact that uh, when Clemson was on probation last year, much of it had to do with the Pell regime. We'll talk about that later. Inches to go for the first down, and the Gators have it. Lorenzo Hampton slashing down to the 19. First down for Florida. I'll tell you, that offensive line of Florida now coming alive. The center is Phil Bromley, the guards John Hunt and Billy Henson, and the tackles Lomas Brown and Scott Trimble. Just under three minutes left in the first half. 10-0 USC. Florida with a first down at the Trojan 19. Dwayne Dixon in motion. Hampton to the right side. Hampton bowls over Tony Brewer, and Hampton gets down to the 13. Brewer on the hit. So this big guy from Lake Wales, a 210-pounder, Bowling his way for six yards. Take a look at this on the ground level again. Uh, the big play there on the part of the strong guard, Billy Henson. Uh, he's on the same side as the tight end. And Henson's the starter is the biggest surprise in the Florida starting lineup uh, because his backup, Buddy Schultheis, a two-year starter, was the Gators' offensive lineman of the year last year. So Henson's been a, a big surprise and a positive one for Florida. It's second and four for the Gators from the 13. Here comes Hampton again. And Hampton is pulled down by Keith Biggers. Good second effort, however, by Hampton. Biggers had him and had a good hit on him. He got away for an extra yard or so. We have a penalty marker down. We have a minute and 55 to go in the first half. 10 nothing USC over Florida. We were discussing before Keith Biggers. I wanted to get back and talk about him. The interesting story here is that he is a fall transfer, Keith Biggers is. So he won his job in just several weeks' time. That's how much he impressed the coaches. Uh, he essentially beat out Neil Holt, although Neil did have the hamstring problem. But uh, he is also a player when he's healthy. But Biggers is just a great athlete overall. He, runs, he ran last year on the relay team at Mount Sac College in the 400 meters. So he's very fast, a real hitter, and very enthusiastic. The penalty against the Gators moves the ball back to the 18 of Southern California. Going out wide to the left side is Gary Roll and Dwayne Dixon. John L. Williams and Hampton out of the I formation for the Gators. It's second down and nine at the 18. Hampton is, he slips one tackle, 
slips another one, and finally they get him down at the 14. Jeff Brown had him nailed for a loss back at about the 21, and he got out of the grasp of Jeff Brown, and finally it was Jerome Tyler, the Trojan free safety, who made the hit at the 14. Gain of four by Hampton. Much of the, the good play in the part of this drive has come from number seven, Hampton, as you see him breaking that tackle up on the part of Brown. Uh, Hampton, last year's starting tailback, he, as we said before, he can catch the football, he caught 11 passes last year while rushing for 664 yards. But the ability of those backs to catch the ball is very key in their drive. Third and five, here comes Hampton, who pitches it back over to row, fumbles the ball. He recovers for Florida back after 25. So a bit of Florida Gator razzle-dazzle goes awry, and the reason it did is because of the penetration made by the Trojans' defensive end, Matt Court, number 91. Also, Keith Biggers in on that play, too. Didn't look like it was a real good handoff or pitch. Well, the reason the it wasn't is because Court was smothering at Hampton, who was pitching back. Mm -hmm. And Biggers very nearly came up with the recovery on that play, too. Shows his quickness. A field goal from uh, the 31-yard line, and the kick is up. It is good. So the Florida Gators get a field goal from Bobby Raymond, and Florida is on the scoreboard. It's now USC 10, Florida 3, with just 23 seconds left in the first half. Ready to kick off for Florida, and the three deep men for the Trojans, Marv Williams, Dwayne Jackson, and Michael Harper, with Harper being in the middle. It'll be fielded by Mike Harper. Automatic touchback, first and ten now for the Trojans, with 23 seconds left in the first half. And SC on top, 10-3. In case you're just joining us, Trojans got a 41-yard field goal from Steve Jordan. Came back on a 16-yard strike from Sean Salisbury to Fred Cornwell. Jordan added the extra point. And then Florida just scored on a 42-yard field goal by Bobby Raymond. That's the way we have it as we draw to a close the first half from the Los Angeles Coliseum, 10-3, USC over Florida. John Salisbury will have John Thomas and Michael Harper in the backfield out of the I formation. It'll be Harper. Looks like he fumbled the ball as he got up there. To oh. Yep, he did, and the Florida Gators have it. That's something that has hampered Michael Harper's play all along, not being able to hold onto the ball. And it is, I mean, it's always a sin to fumble the football, but it really is one when there's only 18 seconds left before the half. You see it right here. Essentially, all you have to do is hold on to the football. You go on with the lead to, into intermission. Harper just never held on to it. Florida's got the ball and got a real good shot here at scoring before, before the half. Just impossible to tell who came up with the ball. But Florida now in business with a first and 10 at the Southern California 21-yard line, 18 seconds left. This is reminiscent of the first half between SC and Florida and Gainesville. Florida got a 47-yard pass play from Peace to Dixon, and they got a touchdown in the closing seconds to lead 14 to nothing at the intermission. That was a year ago. Here comes Hampton, the big guy, steaming out of bounds at around the 15-yard line in hot pursuit of Hampton, the linebackers, and uh, Jerome Tyler. With 14 seconds left, Mike, they have time for about two, perhaps three plays. They're going to try to put it up. If they put the ball up at all, it'll probably be a corner pattern. Hampton's a big, big uh, offensive cog for the Gators. Nine carries, 47 yards, a pretty good first half, particularly in that last drive. But you see, with 14 seconds left, they might try to throw a couple of out patterns, try to get in the end zone, if not get a field goal at least. B. Lang is in the slot to the left. Wide to the left is Dwayne Dixon. Hampton will get the call at the 15. Hampton down to the 11. And Florida calling for a timeout. Tackle on Hampton made by Keith Bronner, the outside linebacker. Nine seconds left in the first half. Nine seconds left. They will spot the ball down at the 12. It'll be third and one. Just shy of the first down for Florida. Nine seconds. Time for perhaps, well, one, maybe two plays. Now the question is, what will Charlie Pell call in this spot? And the Florida Gators have called for the timeout. And Charlie Pell and the offensive coordinator and Wayne Peace having the conflab over in the sidelines. Well, they still have two timeouts left. Uh, if a receiver or a running back can't get outside and get out of bounds, they could always call timeout. So that's working to their advantage. 
I really would try to maybe take one more shot, try to put it in the end zone, maybe pass, uh, maybe a sweep of some sort. They're not that far away. We'll have to see. Wayne Peace getting his instructions. Now, Peace is having a, I think Peace is saying to the referee, look, if this play fails, we want an immediate timeout. He's the instructing, it looks like he's instructing his teammates the same in the huddle right there. Referee is Jimmy Harper from Atlanta, Georgia. Hampton is the tailback. Fullback is John L. Williams. Lang and Dixon wide to the left side. Remember, Florida needs a yard for a first down. Hampton into the middle. Hampton's got the first down, so it's first and goal to go for Florida. That'll automatically stop the clock because they have to move the sticks. Right. Although Florida was calling for a timeout. Yep, and it's going to be a charge timeout to Florida, although they really didn't have to take it. Mm -hmm. They would have had the timeout anyway to move the sticks. But, but you had to cover yourself that's in the right. you didn't get the first down. Now it'll be first and goal to go for Florida at the eight-yard line of Southern California with five seconds left. Hey, they're going to send the field goal yeah. team off. I would have given it one more shot. I think you might have time for two plays. I think I would have, too. You still have a timeout left. Ray Criswell, it could be a fake, though. You never know. It's always a possibility. Criswell will be the holder, and Bobby Raymond will be the kicker. Notice how they line up. Now they shift into their formation for the field goal attempt. This would be from the 15, a 25-yard field goal. The center is Mark Perm. It's good. So that would be a 25-yard field goal by Bobby Raymond, and Florida down 10 to nothing, pulls to within four of the Trojans. With just three seconds left of the first half, it's USC 10, Florida 6. Last year down in Gainesville, the Florida Gators won 17 to 9, and it was all Florida in the first half, but even in the third quarter, and then the Trojans started to come on with one of their patented rallies, but it fell short. This concludes the two-game series between the two schools. Next week, USC will be up in uh, Corvallis, Oregon against the Oregon State Beavers. And next Saturday night, Florida will be at home in Gainesville against Indiana State. Michael Harper, Wayne Jackson, Mark Williams, our team. Jim Hefter and Tony Sevilla working with us up here in the booth on player identification. Dennis Manishin handling the stats. The producer is David Caldwell and the director, Steve Ferguson. Hope you're enjoying the game, and it's been a good one here in the first half from Los Angeles. Perkins kick. And Harper feels it beyond the end line. Still three seconds left, so we will have one USC play now as they will put it in action from the 20. Crowd of about 60,000 on hand on a hot and steamy day from Los Angeles. Well, will the Trojans play it safe or will they go for the bomb? I would think it's bombs away. Well, I'll tell you something. After fumbling with 18 seconds left in the half, I think you just probably should just sit on it. The stats on Sean Salisbury. Three seconds left in the first half. 10-6 USC. Again, a fumble, fumble. And Sean Salisbury has to cover. And that's the end of the first half. John Kamenov fumbled the handoff. Sean Salisbury was there to cover. And the Trojans are looking a bit distressed as they leave the field at the end of the first half. Even though they have the lead, they're saying to themselves, hey, it could have been more. When they were down there with the first down at the Florida 15, they couldn't get in for a score. And they gave Florida a couple of field goals. So at halftime, Southern California 10, Florida 6. Yards rushing in the first half. And when you think of the great SC powerhouses of the past, powered by Heisman Trophy winners Charles White, O.J. Simpson, Marcus Allen, and Mike Garrett, and yet the Trojans able to get only 40 yards rushing in the first half. And the longest yardage from scrimmage in a rushing play was nine yards from Michael Harper. He's got 19 total to lead SC. The big story for Florida has from Lorenzo Hampton. He's got 49 yards at the half. He's had a real fine first half. Okay, we're getting ready to go into the second half. Again, halftime score, 10-6, USC over Florida. Here's the kickoff, and it's off the hands of uh, Dwayne Jackson, and it'll be a touchback. 
So the Trojans, who had fumbleitis in the last 28 seconds of the first half, don't exactly distinguish themselves on the kickoff to start the second half. Dwayne Jackson had it go right through his hands. Clearly, Sean Salisbury is going to try to get his running game going. As you mentioned before, only 40 yards net in the first half. He's got to try to spring Spencer. He's got to try to move the ball outside, get the ball to common a little bit, a couple of swing passes here, but you've got to set up that rushing game so your passing game can work. Southern California with a 10-6 lead. First play of the second half. Sean Salisbury has SC with a first and 10 from the 20. It's the tailback, Todd Spencer. And Todd Spencer up to the 25. We haven't talked too much about Todd Spencer today. He hasn't carried the ball too much. He has the most experience, of course, of any of the backs at SC as you take a look at Charlie Pell. Spencer's played fullback. He's blocked very well, of course, blocking for Marcus Allen. He's almost uh, won that position by default. He's the only tailback who lasted for the entire spring without injury against Florida last year. Rushed five times, 16 yards. Norman, wide right. Timmy Ware, wide left on second and five for Salisbury at his own 25. Salisbury on the bootleg, and he is bumped out of bounds by Bruce Vaughn, the right quarterback of the Florida Gators. And Bruce Vaughn remembers the SC game a year ago because he broke his foot in that game and he was knocked out for, for most of the year, or I believe the entire year, actually. That's right. Uh, so but he's a good one because he had five interceptions the year before in 81. Sure. Looked like that time. Now, I don't know if that was a design play or not. It sure didn't look like it. It looked almost like a broken play. Whatever it was, it was a net loss of five yards. And now the Trojans backed up to their 20 again on third down and 10. One of the keys to uh, Florida's defense is the nose guard, Tim Newton. We haven't talked too much about him. He's worked very, very hard uh, with his upper body. Lost 20 pounds, building up strength, power. Tim Newton's a guy that uh, you might fear if you saw him. He looks a lot like Mr. T. Last year, he had that mohawk hairdo. In fact, Mr. T, I think, might call him sir. You know what they say about Tim Newton? He doesn't lift weights. He throws them. <laughs> Stay away from that guy, huh? Six even, 270-pound junior from Orlando. And he's fearsome with or without that haircut, I might add. I would think the Trojans were a bit concerned at halftime because they could have been out in front 17 to nothing. They gave Florida a couple of shots to get back in it, and the Gators took advantage of the opportunity. And it's now 10-6. Ware wide to the left side. Hank Norman wide to the right. Third and 10, Trojans from their 20. Florida defensive unit shifting around in there, trying to give Salisbury a different look every second. Here's the pitch to John Kamana. And Kamana gets only four yards up to the 24, and SC will be forced to punt. So three plays, and the Trojans can't do anything. And Troy Richardson will be called upon to punt out of trouble. You see Roy Harris, number 99, getting a good jump on the play, although it was run to the other side. Just outstanding tackling on the part of the Florida secondary men coming up on that play. They're really just beating the offensive line to the punch, and certainly in the last maybe five or six minutes before the half and right here early on in the second half. Stats have been very good for Troy Richardson in his USC debut today. Junior college transfer from Golden West preparing to kick to Lorenzo Hampton. Florida with eight men trying to put some pressure on Richardson. Here they come. Low snap and he just did get it away. Nice booming spiral. Hampton is backed up to the 27. I think he signaled for the fair catch. You're allowed to move two steps and he did move just two steps. Almost two and a half. A 50-yard punt by Troy Richardson. Now, remember, last year, the Gator defense held the Trojans to 84 yards gained on the ground. We're going to take a look at the punt return right here. It looked as though, yeah, there's the hand going up right there. Hampton did call for the <laughs> Tried to pull. One, two, oh, look out. Four. Yeah, as I say, two and a half. Yeah, he was trying to get away with something in the field. Florida now with a first and 10. The ball at the Gator 27. Wayne Peace at quarterback. It's Henderson, the fullback, right through, and he comes up to the 32. Nailed by Brian Luck. Second and five now, at the 32. Even though Florida is on offense, I do want to finish my comment about, the, about keeping SC's rushing game in check. 84 yards to the ground last year. Salisbury was sacked uh, four times for a total loss of 29 yards. It's very similar to this year, although SC does have the lead. Got to get that running game going. 
Henderson and Hampton are the running backs for Peace. He looks over his left shoulder, gives it off to Henderson, and Henderson is put down again by Brian Luff. So the new nose guard of the Trojans, filling in for All-American Georgia Chica, put down at the 35. Gain of three. And the Florida Gators now with the third and two. As you look at Henderson, he's going to come out, replaced by John L. Williams. Pretty good play today from John Hunt. He's the quick guard, but the left side guard usually. Uh, the quick guard, that term, is also called the weak side guard. He's the guard on the opposite side of the tight end. Supposed to be the fastest uh, player on the offensive line. Lorenzo Hampton and John L. Williams in tight, back of quarterback piece. He throws to Dixon, who makes the grab and is out of bounds at the 47. Tony Brewer, the strong safety, shoving him out of bounds. A 12-yard game. We haven't talked too much about uh, Dwayne Dixon. He is the younger brother of the former Raider, Hewitt Dixon. Uh, Charlie Pell considers Dwayne Dixon to be the finest wide receiver in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, and Pell is not a kind of guy that, that says too much about his players. He, he usually is not much for praise. Major rap on Dixon is his lack of speed. He's got a 4-8-40. But that time it didn't matter because he has good hands and put the ball. Dixon comes out. Ricky Natillo in to replace him as a wide receiver on the right side. John L. Williams. He slips one tackle. Matt Johnson had him around the waist. And Williams, with his power, just motored right on through. Williams got to the 50. This is a very key drive uh, on both team's part that they want to stop Florida's first series in the second half. Of course, if Florida can move down the field and uh, get a touchdown or even a field goal, they'll have established the fact that that momentum carried over from before the half end. Trojans leading 10 to nothing. Got the ball down to the 15-yard line of Florida. Then the drive stalled, and a field goal attempt by Jordan was no good. Florida was able to get back into it with a couple of field goals. 10-6. 11 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. The pitch to Neil Anderson. Big hole, and Anderson snakes his way down to the 44 of the Trojans. A pickup of six, very close to a first down. Tackle was made by Dwayne Jackson. Are right, you get a chance to take a look at the offensive line of the part of Florida. Uh, number 73, Buddy Schulteis, really one of the men that broke open that hole for Neil Anderson, who's got pretty good speed, one of the fastest guys on this team. You know, Schulteis started against SC a year ago. Now he's second string, so that says something about the strength of the Florida offensive line. Third down and one now at the 44 of SC. Natiel in motion. There goes Anderson, flipping his way down to the 40 of the Trojan. First down for Florida. Keith Biggers, an inside linebacker, put him down, but not until... A first down was registered for the Florida Gators. And once again, it looks like the key to the, the offensive attack for Florida is running right towards the middle of that line, right over Brian Luff uh, to the outside. Uh, Keith Biggers coming up with the tackle right there. But they seem to be gaining ground mostly over where Georgia Chica had played a year ago. They, they stayed to the outside last year. This year, they're going towards Luff. Dwayne Dixon wide to the right side. Petty is the tight end on the left side. This time, nothing there for Neil Anderson. Court, nice tackle. Yes, indeed. Matt Court, the defensive end, with some assistance from linebacker Jeff Brown. They will spot the ball down right at the line of scrimmage, the 40. No gain on the play. Second and 10. You see Charlie Pell sending in plays. Tells an interesting story. He really yes. turned that Florida program around coming out of Clemson. And you look, you look at Charlie Pell. You look at Charlie Pell down on the sidelines. He played an offensive tackle for Bear Bryant back on the national championship team that Bear had at Alabama in '61. He weighed only 160. Peace on the rollout, almost intercepted by Tyler. Jerome Tyler flying through the air. He had a better shot at the interception than did the intended receiver, B. Lang. And I think the key to that play, if we see the replay, which I don't know who will, uh, was Jack Del Rio giving chase to Peace, making a force, a force to play a little bit. Another nice shot from down low. Here's Peace rolling out towards his right. Now watch the bottom of your screen right here, number 52. Well, you couldn't really see it, but it really forced Peace to throw that ball on the run and hurry his pass a little bit. And that, I think, was the key. Third down 10 now for Florida. The ball at the Southern California 40. Hampton is the tailback. Henderson is the fullback. In motion, uh, the tight end, Petty. He's going for Dixon over, throws him down at the eight yard line. Dixon was open. Too. Yes, he had his man, Tony Brewer, whipped. And Peace overthrew him. I'll bet you 
Charlie Pell and Wayne Peace would like to have that one back. If you see the, the Dwayne Dixon's hand, his right hand, if you can take a look at that closer, uh, he has an injured thumb. In fact, he's playing with a torn ligament in his right thumb. He hurt it in the first scrimmage game this fall. He's worn both a cast and a split. Can you imagine a receiver wearing a cast? But it hasn't really hampered Dwayne Dixon too much. He was open on that play. Had that ball been there, it would have been a touchdown. Dave Nardone getting ready to punt for Florida. Darrell Hopper, the deep man for the Trojans, standing at his 10. Mark Herm will make the snap. And it's off the side of the foot. Of, he was trying to probably punt out of bounds, although he might have shanked it a little bit at the same time. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. That was a punt of only 18 yards by Nardone. Nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. The Trojans still holding on to a lead over Florida. with Florida in possession later in the third quarter. First and 10 at the Southern California 46. It's John L. Williams and Biggers has him wrapped up. Keith Biggers went to Sarah High in Los Angeles, then to Mount San Antonio, transferring to USC in the spring. Ball placed down at the 41 of the Trojans, second down and five. This has been a good drive for Florida. Started back in their own 13 after taking the punt from Troy Richardson. Now they have the ball down at the SC 41. Trojans on top, 10-6. Little over three minutes to go in this third quarter. Little slant in over the head of the intended receiver. And once, Odom. Again, once again, Del Rio really putting the pressure on Peace, make him hurry his throw. That's exactly what happened there. Had Peace maybe had a, maybe a second more to, to wait for that receiver to get out there. We don't know. He might have been broken for a touchdown. Crowd estimated at 60,000 here today at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Third and five now for Florida at the Trojan 41. Big possession play here, Mike. Roll and Dixon wide to the left side. The running backs are Williams and Anderson. Peace. Here comes Del Rio, and Pease completes it. Roll. Oh, a great catch there made by Gary Roll in heavy traffic. 16 yards. Florida with a first down at the Southern California 25. Terrific effort here from number 86, Gary Roll. At 5 foot 9 inches, he really had to go over the back of Tony Brewer to make this catch. Here it is once again. He is upended. Brewer making a real bone crunching up uh, end over end kind of tackle holding on to the football though is Gary Roll big first down for Florida and Brewer and Tyler thought they had that well covered but Roll just made a tremendous catch I think they did have it well covered first and 10 now for the Gators at the 25 Henderson darting into the middle to the 21 a gain of four by the Florida fullback. Tony Brewer getting up off the bottom of the pile along with Del Rio. Second out and six now for Florida. Trojan still on top, but that lead certainly is in jeopardy right now. We might see a pass to the tight end here, or fairly soon. We haven't seen uh, too much uh, action with the tight end, but uh, usually they go to the fullback or the tight end in passing situations. This is the 11th straight play run off by the Florida offense. Second and six at the Trojan 21. It is Neil Anderson. Anderson inside the 15 goes to the 13 of Southern California. Right now, the SC defense can't stop the Florida Gators, and it's another first down for Florida at the 13 of Southern California. Del Rio and Jeff Brown finally caught up with Neil Anderson. Here is the play once again. You get a chance to see Anderson getting uh, into the secondary right here. Jeff Brown. Well, one of the reasons the senior's starting is because the sophomore John Berry has been nagged by a neck sprain. But uh, Brown's another one of those baseball, football type players. That, that play, though, Henderson was the man who dominated. Picked up the yardage. Outside of that 16-yard pass play to roll, it's been basically on the ground for Florida in this sequence. That time, Neil Anderson got a couple. Tackled by Dave Perling. Ball's going to be spotted down very close to the 13-yard line, which is the line of scrimmage. A minute and 25 seconds left in this third quarter, and uh, Florida's really dominated the third period, although they haven't been able to get on the board yet. 
It's still USC 10 and Florida 6. Second down and 10. Peace dumps it off to Henderson. Henderson was pulled down by Johnson, but then he got away from Johnson. He was starting to go down, got away, and Biggers put the finishing touches on him there at the 10. What Eight a, of only three, and what Henderson's a, hurt. Yeah, what a crunching, crunching tackle on the part here by Matt Johnson. As you watch the play-action pass coming over the top, Henderson really didn't have a chance to turn around and, and adjust for the tackle, and it was sort of a secondary kind of reaction, but uh, Matt Johnson was really the man who made that stop. Biggers coming on to help out. They're still working over Henderson, a sophomore fullback from Winter Garden, Florida. Looked like he got a knee to the head as I watched the replay. When you get those bodies flying around, sometimes they carry them off of one another, and the guy who really is out of the play turns out to give a, be dishing out the most damage. One of the reasons that Henderson is in there, one of the reasons he's had such a, a good fall practice, was the fact that uh, he is a good pass catcher. You take a look at him at the very end of this catch, but there you see him getting the knee right into the head, and I'll tell you something, he'll, he'll think about that one Wednesday or Thursday of this week, too. 55 seconds left in this third quarter. It's still USC 10, Florida 6. Henderson is all right. He's out of the game, but he went off the field under his own power. John L. Williams is now the fullback. It's third and seven at the Trojan 10. The tailback, Hampton, to pass. Peace, he's being chased. Peace at the five, down to the three. They got the first. It may be enough for a first down on the rollout by quarterback Wayne Peace. Well, Florida's gesturing as though they have it right here. It appears as though they do. Here it is once again. This is a straight rollout. Peace has an option to be either throwing the football or holding on to it. He did right there. It looked like Williams with a pretty good block. And it's very, very close to the first down. It is the first down. First and goal to go Florida at the Southern California 3. See Del Rio and Peace going out of there a little bit. A little extracurricular activity. 10-6 SC. But Florida only three yards away from a touchdown. The go-ahead score. It's Hampton. Scoring for Florida. Lorenzo Hampton plunging over from three yards out. A hole opened up between right guard and right tackle. The blocking of the center, Phil Bromley, Billy Henson, and Scott Trimble. And Florida takes the lead for the first time in this game. A drive of 87 yards in 15 plays, consuming a lot of time here in the third quarter. Well, the key block here was in the part of the strong guard, Billy Henson. Number 60, as you see, Hampton just going up and over in the end zone. A long drive on the part of Florida, and here's the extra point. It is good. So Raymond adds the extra point, and Florida now leading 13-10 over the Trojans with 23 seconds left in the third quarter. Offensively, we've talked about it all game, but offensively, SC's off offensive line has to just break open some holes for some of these running backs. You've got to see Spencer break into that secondary, Harper as well. They haven't done it so far in the game, although Salisbury's had a pretty good game pass. Norman and Ware are both wide to the right side. Fake handoff to Freddie Crutcher. Salisbury going long and deep for Timmy Ware. He has it at the 30. Ware down to the 25. A 55-yard pass play. Sean Salisbury to Timmy Ware. And this time you get a chance to see that great speed on the part of Timmy Ware. He was on the USC track team, beating two men by a couple of steps, it looked like. Ware runs a 9-700 of 47-69, 400 meters. He's still a young man, not a whole lot of football credentials, but that was a very big catch from that young man. That young man, number 19, Timmy Ware, has run the 100 in 9-7, and he really put on the afterburners. Here's Pamina. Penalty marker goes down as Kamenov cracks his way to the Florida 18. A pickup of seven by Kamenov, if this will hold, but it will not. Holding against Southern California. Mm. That'll set him back. That's going to hurt. On that 55-yard pass play, Salisbury to where? It was Tony Lilly and Randy Clark who finally ran him down. When you talk about the receivers for SC, Timmy Ware had all of nine passes in his career coming into this game. It was a big catch as they talk to, to Florida right now. 
There's a lot of inexperience at wide receiver for, for USC as well. I mean, you lost Jeff Simmons, who was your all-time leading receiver. He's not with the Rams. Right. He, uh, he was just cut by the Rams. No, and then they reactivated him. They, they did reactivate him. So it's, uh, it's a big loss when you lose somebody like a Jeff Simmons, and a Timmy White as well. So they're really starting from scratch in a lot of ways. Walk off of 10 yards against the Trojans. That'll put the ball all the way back to the 35 on the holding penalty. So now it'll be first and 10. Time has run out here in the third quarter, but a game can't end on a penalty, so rather a quarter can't end on a penalty. We'll have one more play. First down and 20 now for the Trojans with the ball back on their 35. Hard to believe that he played offensive tackle at Alabama. Charlie Pell, that is, at 180 pounds. Reminiscent of Terry Donahue, the UCLA coach. He was a defensive tackle at about 182. Salisbury will throw incomplete to Zephyr Lee. And Lee, the ball came right to him, a ball that he should have caught. That's the end of the third quarter on this pass play from John Salisbury to Lee, who couldn't hold on. So at the end of the third period, Florida now leading Southern California 13 to 10. First one with you, Florida leading 13 to 10. And the Trojans now with a second and 20 from their 35-yard line. Salisbury swings one out. Norman makes the grab at the 30, and then he is pulled down at the 29. Good defensive play there by Florida's Randy Clark. Stayed right with Norman, and Norman was trying to give him a little juke move. He wouldn't go for it. Pulled him down at the 29. He said, Norman, is that you? Did he say that? I don't know. Maybe he didn't have some, but he had his number anyway. So the ball is spotted down actually at the 28. Third down, 13 now for the Trojans at the Florida 28. That's a big play, too, right here. Kamenov, the lone running back for the Trojans. Salisbury wants to go to Norman. He had him, and he threw the pass behind him low. Poorly thrown pass that yep. time for Salisbury. As a matter of fact, Salisbury had so much time, he could have probably run for the first down. Just a badly thrown pass. And on comes Steve Jordan to try to tie the game. Jordan will try this one from the 35-yard line. You can see how Florida was able to dominate in the third quarter and add to their margin, which they held at halftime in statistics. Joe Leinbach will make the snap. Timmy Green spots it down. The kick by Jordan is up. It's got the distance. It's good! A 45-yard field goal by Steve Jordan. And this game is deadlocked here in Los Angeles at 13 apiece. We pick up action with the Trojans in possession later in the fourth quarter. Trojans with a first down from their 25. Salisbury has Kamana in the backfield along with Fred Crutcher. It'll be Fred Crutcher. He's to the 30. Fred Crutcher goes up to the 33. A gain of eight yards by Crutcher. Tim Newton, the nose guard of Florida, got him down. Well, if they couldn't get their offensive uh, rushing attack going early in this game, they certainly would love to have it going now because if you can get it going and maybe eat up about seven or eight minutes of that clock and score, you know, that would leave Florida with only maybe two minutes left in the game. So they really would like to have a good, long drive, keep the ball on the ground, or keep the ball inbounds, try to eat up as much of the clock as they can. Ted Tolder has three tailbacks, Michael Harper, Todd Spencer, and Fred Crutcher. No one has dominated as yet. Right now, Crutcher is the lone running back. And he gets the call again to the 35. Up to the 37-yard line. First down for Crutcher and for USC. The hit made by quarterback Bruce Vaughn. Here it is again. You get a chance to take a look at the relatively inexperienced USC offensive line. Tony Slayton with a pretty good block there, number 73 at center. But the ball moving to the outside. Fitzpatrick, number 70, with a pretty good block in there. It's a first down. SC wants to hold on to the ball. Wilbur Marshall is out of the Florida defensive alignment now, replaced by Ron Motten. Kamana gets the call, and Kamana goes to the 41. A pickup of four by the SC fullback. Second down and six. Looking across the way, 
I spotted Marv Gu, who spent some 26 years here at USC as a player and as an assistant coach. He went with John Robinson on John's staff with the Los Angeles Rams. And right next to Marv Gu is Jack Youngblood, who played his college ball at... Jack Youngblood played University of Florida. That's of right. So it's Gu for SC against Youngblood of Florida on the sideline. And, you know, John is here, too. John Robinson's at the game, too, enjoying it. Yes, he's not, he doesn't have to coach till tomorrow. He, can, he really can enjoy it. Second and six. Salisbury throws to Norman. Out of bounds. Norman made the grab and then was hit out of bounds. Bruce Vaughn hit Norman, but Norman had made the catch, had both feet planted, and was driven out of bounds at the 50. First down for the Trojans. Another big catch here by Henry Norman. Once again, you get a chance to see Salisbury. Lots of time to throw. Just calmly puts it up. Little turn in play, it looked like. Vaughn with the stop. Another first down. Now, some may say, where was Hank Norman last year? Well, last year he was hampered with a sprained ankle. Well, you didn't hear much of him in 1982, but you are start out 1983. At midfield, here comes Crutcher. Big hole, Crutcher. Drives his way down to the 41. Red Crutcher. And so far, Crutcher has looked the best of the SC tailbacks. And this is by far SC's best drive in this half, and it looks as though they're finally beginning to break open some holes. It looks like uh, Florida's defense might be tiring a bit. As you see Vaughn once again, Tony Lilly also making the stop right there. They're finally beginning to break open some holes. Fred Crutcher, Crutcher almost to 40 yards, six, six carries. That's about six yards a pop, too. Leon Pennington injured on the play, and Florida has called for a timeout. Eight minutes to go in this one, and we're tied at 13. <laughs> A double. Kennedy Pola is the fullback out of the I formation. Crutcher the tailback. Kamana going back and forth. It's Crutcher trying to get the. Oh, what a hit he takes. Not from one, but from two. First, it is 98. That's Patrick Miller. And he also got a crack from Curtis Stacy. They will mark his forward progress near the 40, but I don't think he got enough for a first down. It's close, but not enough. So it'll be third and about a half yard to go for the first down. That was a Florida 40. With seven minutes and 40 seconds left in the game, I would say that this is the key play in the football game thus far. You're really going to go out on the limb. Out on the limb. Coming off, going in motion. It's Crutcher. First down and into fumbles the ball recovered by Florida. Crutcher had the first down, all right. He thought maybe he could get a lot more. And the fumble recovered by Vito McKeever. Oh, that's that a heartbreak. Sports another SC drive. That really hurts, obviously. And to take a look at it again, Crutcher with the first down. All he had to do was tuck it away, maybe pick up an extra yard or two. The ball looked like it was hit out of his arms, right into the arms of Vito McKeever. Big, big play for Florida. Potentially a game turner. Some famous SC coaches in the past have had troubles in their opener. John McKay, John Robinson, Ted Kohler in his debut, tied 13 all with Florida. Here we have a little over seven minutes to go. Peace lobs it out to John L. Williams. Slips the tackle by Browner. Williams can fly, and it's Jerome Tyler who catches up with him. Oh. Boy, that was a situation where it looked as though, and I don't want to second guess Keith Browner, but it looked like Keith might have nonchalanted it just a bit. Thinking the play was almost over. If we take a look at the replay right here. Pete throwing to his fullback. Florida will usually do that. A little swing pass. Now watch Browner right here. Looked like he, he thought he had him. And just, just out of his grasp, picking up another 10, 12 yards. Big play there. The ball is at the SC 48-yard line on the gain of 20 yards. First and 10, Florida. In motion comes Neil Anderson. Give is to John L. Williams. Williams gets around goal to pull him out of bounds again. A speedy John L. Williams, who didn't play in Florida's win over Miami 28 to 3 a week ago due to a stress foot fracture, seems to be hale and healthy here in Los Angeles right now. Well, certainly he's been the player in the last couple of plays, really turning this game around right here for Florida. Williams, one of the best freshmen in the country last year. He was a tailback a year ago, moved to pullback to make certain that his skills were utilized rather, having, rather than having him share time. But to so far today, six carries, 30 yards, but that was a big one right there. 
Dixon split to the right. In the slot to the right is B. Lang. In motion, Lorenzo Hampton. It's Williams again. Big hole, and Williams is pulled down by Biggers and also by Jack Del Rio at the 19. But John L. Williams picking up six more. It's hard to gauge the emotions of the field right now, but I would think that that fumble really let that defense down a lot. They came down, uh, their heads hanging a little bit, and I think it's changed the, the outlook of this game, the whole, the whole tempo of this game. Trojans appeared to go in at halftime 10 nothing, and it was 10 6 for the time they left the field. Now tied at 13, Florida driving. Second and four at the 19 of Southern California. Henderson, Jeff Brown has him. Also assisting on the tackle, Matt Johnson. But it's a first down for Florida at the Southern California 13-yard line. Well, what's becoming more and more apparent, Mike, is that uh, there's some arm tackling going down in that field right now. It doesn't look like there's a lot of shirt stops. The initial guys getting in there, missing their man. That was uh, another good indication of it right there. It just looks like uh, SC really is grabbing at, the, at the, uh, the ball carrier, and that's no way to tackle. Six minutes left in this one from the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles. Florida with a first down at the Southern California 13. And a fumble! It's recovered by Southern California at the 10. Keith Browder makes the recovery for USC. I tell you, this game has had more ups and downs than a roller coaster. Very similar to Fred Petcher's play. It looked as though... Uh, I believe it was Hampton here with the ball. It is. No, he never did have control of the ball. He just never grabbed it. Keith was right there on top of it. Whereas before, Crutcher had some, some daylight and didn't tuck the ball away. This time it appeared as though Hampton just never had control of the football. Did you see how Browner got rid of that ball? Like he Funny. Was, well, like he was rolling the dice at Vegas, you know? <laughs> come along seven. Well, seven come 11. Well, five minutes, 54 seconds left. Plenty of time for a drive. Yeah, but the Trojans have got to go a long way. Yeah, 90 yards. Well, a little, not quite, but yeah, 89. And they're going to mark some off, too. Yep, because he didn't give the ball up. That's it. Oh, boy. Yeah, wow. that's the rule. Can you imagine? And when you score a touchdown, if you don't drop the ball or give it to uh, the nearest official, you're going to be penalized. I think that's what they did because Browner took the ball and scattered it so now the ball goes back to the night to about the six yard line first and 15 now the ball is at the SC six Freddie Crutcher about four yards close to the 14 Roy Harris grabbed him and put him down there five minutes and 40 seconds left second and about 11 yards to go for the Trojans near their 14. SC wants to be very careful here, too, because even if they don't get the first down, they've got to punt that ball away, assuming they don't get anything going on this drive, and that would give them Florida the ball right back in some very good field position. So they try to want to really try to get at least a couple of first downs, if anything at all. Lone running back is Fred Crutcher. In motion, Mark Boyer. Crutcher getting to the outside, making his cut at the pin. Kennedy Marker goes down. Crutcher goes down at the 16. I think it was a holding. We'll have to wait and see. It looked as though maybe Halleck, Tom Halleck, the uh, offensive guard, may have grabbed somebody. We'll wait and see. There looks like they're talking to Florida and Tony Lilly. Yep. Face mask. Oh. oh, that's sloppy hands. When your hands get away from your body, that's the five-yard penalty. And Ted oh, Tolder... Really well, his expression, I think, sums up the whole thing. It was on number 76, Tom Holland, the offensive guard. Boy, that really is going to hurt, too. When Ted Tolder took over, because he developed such pass-oriented teams at BYU and San Diego State, a lot of SC fans said, hey, they're getting away from the eye formation and the run, run, run. They're going to be the Stanford of the South, throw 40, 50 times a game. How many passes do you suppose USC has thrown today? A little more than their average. What was their average anyway last year? That's going to surprise a lot of people. The Trojans averaged 26 passes per game last year. Today they've thrown it 16 times. Hmm. SC also averaged 75 plays per game last year. K 
Kennedy Pola is the fullback. He's the lone running back now. Second and 14. The ball is at the SC6. Salisbury swings it out. It is complete to Mark Boyer, a tight end. Mark Boyer has got a first down. What a great effort on the part of Boyer. Boy, oh boy. Take a look at this again. He just carried a man over the, over the first down position. Looks like we're looking at some old footage here. It's the video screen at the ah. end of the peristyle end here. <laughs> looks like Coliseum. ancient footage from a, from a different year. But that's the, the video screen you're looking at uh, the Coliseum. But Boyer just carrying a man. Oh, oh boy. It's first and 10 now. The ball is at the 21 of USC. We have four and a half minutes left. Tied at 13. Fake the crutcher. Salisbury lobs it out here to Norman. He can't make a one-handed grab at the 39. Overthrown. Pass too tall for the 6'4", Hank Norman. It's too tall for him. It's too tall for most people. Roger Sybil was covering for Florida. It's amazing to me that Florida has never won a Southeast Conference football championship in 49 years. Well, Alabama might have had something to say about I that. I think they might have. And recently, Georgia. Yeah. You know, Georgia and uh, Alabama, well, let's see. Florida does not play Alabama, but they do play Georgia November the 5th in Jacksonville. A lot of schools miss one another in that Southeast Conference. Kennedy Pola, lone running back for the Trojans. Salisbury with four and a half minutes to go. Almost intercepted. Oh, was that close. Fred McAllister, the linebacker, had it hit him up in the hands and popped straight up into the air. Ooh. Pretty good uh, coverage that time. Pretty good rush, I might say, too. McAllister just very, very close to getting an interception. That rush was by Alonzo Johnson, yeah. who was right in the face of Sean Salisbury. Well, third down and ten. Another big possession play right here. Four and a half minutes left. Key, key play again. Ware is wide to the right side. Salisbury's going to be sacked. Fumbles the ball. Recovered by Florida. Salisbury hit from behind. Popped up the ball. Florida has it. First and ten at the Southern California 14. Melvin Ellison. Take a look at it again, Mike. It appears as though Salisbury never saw the defender right behind him. Watch the man behind him coming back into the screen now. Sean just never saw him. He was blindsided, caught the ball up. Looks like Alonzo Johnson. No, it's 92. No, but Alonzo Johnson may have forced the play. Right. Melvin Ellison came up with the ball for Florida. We have 423 left. Dixon wide to the right side, along with Gary Roll. Florida with a first down at the Trojan 14. It's John L. Williams. He's to the 10. He's to the 9. Crunch down there by Matt Johnson and Jerome Tyler and Jeff Brown and Keith Biggers. Donnie Ray, Ted Tolner. Ted Tolner now talking with Sean Salisbury. Dave Wanset, assistant coaches in the foreground. Florida with a ball inside the 10 right at the 9. Second down and about four for the first down, nine yards for the touchdown that could win it. 3.50 to go, tied at 13. Little swing pass to Gary Roll. Roll goes down to the one-yard line. A little quick hitch pass with the quarterback piece leaping up in the air and throwing to Gary Roll. And Roll got him down at the... They're going to spot it down at the two-yard line. First and goal to go for Florida. and goal to go at the two. Here comes Dixon wide to the left side. 13-13 tied with three and a half minutes left. Fumble! Big pile up there. As Peace was getting it from the center, Bromley, he lost control as he started to pull back, and Florida regains possession. Oh boy. It looked as though SC was claiming they had it first. This program has been recorded and edited for broadcast at this time. And we have three minutes and 20 seconds left now. It'll be second and goal to go with the ball at the two. Second and goal, Florida at the two. Williams is 
the fullback. Peace fakes. It is batted down. Keith Browner got his hand in the way as Peace just released the pass and batted it down. Another All-America type play by Keith Browner. Here it is. You get a chance to see it again. Peace trying to go over the top over Keith Browner and Browner being so tall at six foot six inches just batting the ball away. He's lucky that pass wasn't intercepted. I'll tell you that. Now you got to remember if it gets down to fourth and goal it's now third and goal but if it gets down to that they've got Raymond an excellent field goal kicker and this would be just a short chip shot for him. Here it is. In motion. Roll. Pitch back goes to Hampton. Oh, oh. He fumbles the ball the one yard line and it looks like Florida retained possession. Oh. So the ball will be done at the one and apparently Hampton was able to cover that fumble. Here it is one more time. He's a short little pitch to Hampton who fumbled earlier remember. And this time it just, again it didn't look like he just held on to the football just dropped it picked it right back up on the bounce. Fourth down. Now they Florida Gators are lining up in their field goal ship. Criswell will hold, and Bobby Raymond, who has already kicked two field goals, will boot this one from the eight. An 18-yard field goal. It's up. It is good. And Florida takes the lead with two minutes left in the game on an 18-yard field goal by Bobby Raymond. It's Florida 16, USC 13. It appeared that uh, USC was trying to mount a drive late in the game. They tried to, to come away with the victory, too. It fell short, losing the game, but uh, also in the last two minutes. Florida will probably give you the five, six-yard pass now. They just don't want a deep one. John Kamenai is the lone running back. Salisbury incomplete to Kamenai at the 25. Pass was a little high, but Kamenai should have had that. It was thrown a little too hard, too, I think. All you needed was a swing pass on that play. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it, Michael? Yes, I like that uh, new video board. It costs some four to five million dollars. They have 91,000 lamps in that board at the Peristyle Inn here at the Coliseum. Getting ready for the 1984 Olympics. Now it'll be second and ten. Salisbury has time across the middle. It is bobbled around and intercepted. back to the Southern California 17-yard line. I think it was Pat Miller that finally wound up with the ball. We'll watch it again. Here you get a chance to see Salisbury throwing the ball. It was tipped once, twice, three times the ball was tipped. Patrick Miller has it. And guess who picked it off? Patrick oh, Miller. That is Pat Miller. Okay, I thought it looked like 88. Could have been Wilbur, but... Uh, that would have been ironic. But Pat Miller, number 98. So that might be the last challenge by the Trojans today with 146 to go. Florida, 16-13 over USC. And uh, the Gators for the first down at the 18 of the Trojans. Into the middle goes Neil Anderson. He stopped at the 16. And you notice the, go the Gator backs now double checking to make sure they've got that firm grip on that ball. All the fumbles we've had in this one. Matt Court made the tackle. 129. Florida just a minute and less than, than a minute and a half away from the second victory of 1980. And Ted Tolder about to join the ranks of John McKay, John Robinson and Don Clark who also lost their first games as head coach at USC. And some pretty fast company there, isn't it? <laughs> Williams slipping one tackle, but then Del Rio finishes him off right at the line of scrimmage. Jack Del Rio right on top of him. 
He had B. Lang in the end zone. He just didn't spot him. 50 seconds left now. And what a sweet one this will be for Florida. They will own SC the last couple of years, winning 17 to 9 in Gainesville a year ago. And on top here, 16 13 with 50 seconds left. Still 50 seconds is 50 seconds. They can win it with one second. You know, you look at the Florida schedule after Indiana State next Saturday. They play at Mississippi State on the 24th, at LSU the 1st of October, then Vanderbilt on the 8th of October, East Carolina the 22nd, at Auburn the 29th, Georgia the 5th, Kentucky the 12th of November, and Florida State winds it up December the 3rd. But Florida does not play Alabama this year. It was Bobby Raymond who gave the Gators the lead with that 18 yard field goal and he's going to try this one from the 29 with 50 seconds left. It's got the distance all right and it's good. A 39 yard field goal by Bobby Raymond. It's the fourth field goal in this game and the Gator fans about 3,000 of them here in Los Angeles a happy lot right now. Dave Caldwell, Tom Fick, and Steve Ferguson, and all the rest. No timeouts left for the Trojans with 46 seconds left. And SC's got to have a touchdown and an extra point to pull this one out. Impossible? Maybe. Here comes Salisbury. He's going to go long and deep to Norman. He can't get it. It appeared that Norman was grabbed by Bruce Vaughn crowd booing across the way but no flag drop Salisbury now with 12 out of 21 in the passing department today one touchdown that was a throw of some 16 yards to tight end Fred Cornwell 41 seconds to go 1913 Florida Salisbury the only weapon the Trojans have right now there he is at the 40 he's up to the 41 and there is a late hit the penalty marker is dropped That'll cost the Gators 15 more yards. Yeah. Hey, time still left, 34 seconds. Charlie Pell is probably saying to himself, oh, why, why now? You didn't have to do that. Absolutely not. No excuse for that filing out there. All right, watch the replay once again. Salisbury calmly, I think calmly too, with the fact there's only 40 seconds left in the game, stepping up, throwing to where, 20-yard game, and watch Lilly, boom, right there. No need for that, honey. Now they'll mark off 14 yards from the gain, so that'll put the Trojans down into Florida territory at the Florida 44. 34 seconds left. What did Yogi Berra once say? It's not over till it's, it's over. over. That's right. 34 seconds. The clock won't start down until the ball is snapped. John Salisbury looking for Norman. He dumps it off to Kamenau at the 40. Kamenau's pulled down right at the 40-yard line. Good tackle by linebacker Fred McAllister. The clock running. You got to regroup quickly. SC no time has no left. timeout. You better quickly throw it out of bounds to stop the clock, which is perfectly legal the last couple of years. Salisbury not going to do it. Instead, he's going to go to Norman. No good. That'll stop the clock at seven seconds. Boy, how similar to, is this game that was last year? The same situation. They were, they were with the ball within the last 20, 30 seconds left trying to come up with a victory. Seven seconds. Time for maybe two more Salisbury passes. It'll be second and six, but that really isn't important. Timmy Ware to the right side. Salisbury looking for Ware. He puts it up there. Penalty markers are dropped, and the ball is no good in the end zone. Time has expired, but a penalty marker was Might be dropped. Against Florida. If it is, it's going to put SC in business at about the four-yard line. The board we'll shows no time left. Let's wait and see. Illegal substitution. Or procedure call. Not with the hands on top of the head. Got me, Mike. I can't tell what was going on down there. 
I know he threw the ball up. I was looking for an interference. Well, ball. maybe they had 12 men in the field. That's a possibility. There's no time left on the clock. What do you do here? You have, I guess, if, if it's a penalty against Florida, they have one more play. The Trojans would, yes, indeed. Here's the walk-off. How do you like this? I think Florida had too many men in the field. Anyway, the Trojans have one last chance. The ball is at the 25. I would think that Florida is going to have about 10 men drop back deep. 1913 Florida, last play of the game. Salisbury going for Timmy Ware. He's, He's got, got the ball. It. He's got it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now they still have to kick the extra point. No flags. I don't see a flag anywhere. I have never seen anything like that. The clock had run out before the last play. And they played on the last play of the game because of the penalty. But it's only tied. They've got to kick the extra point. SC has to kick the extra point to win. Oh. What a way to finish it. Here it is again, Salisbury taking his time. A little in pattern, perfect pass, perfect pass. And look at 36, Vito McKeever draped all over Timmy Ware. There's no other way to describe it. That was a picture perfect pass. Great catch from Timmy Ware. There used to be a saying that God is a Trojan. <laughs> I think that thing has been revived here in 1983. And how do you like that with no time on the clock? Because of the penalty, they're given one more play. Technically, there was no more, no more time left. Look at Steve Jordan, a solitary figure there, as he's getting ready to kick the extra point. Uh, the last this? play of the game, no time left. As you look at it again, Charlie Pell says, what? This is happening to me? I don't believe it either. Look at him. Did and you ever wonder, figure out what that penalty was? Was it too many men on the field? I did not get that is the signal. Unbelievable. Still have to convert it right here. Snapping Leinbach holding Tim Green kicking. Oh my goodness, Green's gonna have to throw it. And they have to settle for a tie. Can you believe this weird windup? Florida and SC tie at 19. The SC fans, in stunned disbelief, they just assumed that the extra point would be automatic. Especially with Steve Jordan, who's only missed one. So welcome, Ted Tolder, to coaching at USC. And Charlie Fell and Ted Tolder consoling one another. It has been that type of a game. Neither team satisfied with the tie, but the Trojans very happy indeed that they got it. They thought they had a victory. It looked like they were going to pull it off with an amazing finish, only to be denied on the extra point attempt and went awry. And they have to settle for a 19-19 deadline. An incredible wrap-up to an incredible game. SC in Florida winding up at a 19-19 draw here today. Last second. You know, usually you see a game won in the last second, but where there's no seconds left, it's, it's kind of an O. Henry finish. Uh, I think that there's a moral to this game for the Trojan fans, and that is don't look a Trojan horse in the mouth, and that's really what happened. Uh, really, they had a gift. And I think that they should be satisfied with the tie because basically the game was over. That's right. And you know. Florida had won. Yeah. But SC got one last chance because Florida had 12 men on the field. The penalty gave SC one more shot. And Sean Salisbury made the most out of it. That 25-yard pass to Timmy Ware. That tied it at 19. And everybody in the Coliseum thinking, well, SC's going to pull out a one-point victory. The extra point is automatic. Nothing is automatic in sports. Joe Leinbach's snap from center was low. Timmy Green had to scramble around, could only throw an incomplete forward pass. We had to settle for a tie. Now, there are different pieces to that puzzle. You have to have the snap right and the kick right, and uh, the first half of it was wrong sure. today. Joe Leinbach's a uh, little upset about that. It's his first bad snap he's had in four years, but he'll be back, too. Still a tie. It was a good football game all the way around. For Roy Firestone, this is Mike Walden saying so long from the Los Angeles Coliseum, where USC and Florida tied at 19.
Join us next week on USA for College Football 83 as the Purdue Boilermakers travel to Florida to take on the University of Miami Hurricanes. USA College Football 83 has been brought to you by Mobile One, the best engine protection you can give your car. By Toyota, who remind you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. And by Levi's Menswear, makers of Levi's Action Slacks. The executive producer of USA Network Sports is Jim Zrake. Coordinating producer for USA's College Football 83, Brian Williams. Programming supervisor, Marty Brooks. Today's game was produced by Tom Fick and directed by Steve Ferguson. The production coordinator for USA Sports is Barbara Travers. This has been a sports presentation of the USA Network.